It's almost too ridiculous, certainly too easy, to mock celebrities who give their deep thoughts on political matters. I mean, a few weeks ago, it was Leonardo DiCaprio, one of the richest actors in Hollywood, marching in the, get this, the People's Climate March in New York. People's Climate March. It was basically Occupy Wall Street out for a walk, every left-wing anti-capitalist nut out for a stroll. Of course, the crowd was overwhelmingly made up of white, rich, liberal kids. It was some sort of Freudian thing about getting back at dad or something. But the laugh was that DiCaprio was there. The multi-multi-millionaire walking with the people, raging against capitalism and overconsumption. Yeah, this is the mega yacht that DiCaprio parties on when he's not at people's marches, marching with the people. Here's one of the countless paparazzi photos of him getting on and off of private jets. I mean, you don't think he flies commercial like the little people do, you know? I mean, once a year he marches with the people. Isn't that enough? He's actually the United Nations spokesmodel on climate change. Seriously, I kid you not. That's too easy to do, isn't it? And I haven't even got to the bigger point. DiCaprio is famous and rich for reading lines that other people give him to say. Not for his own thoughts and words. He's, he's not a famous thinker or a famous writer or activist. He reads scripts handed to him. He does things that directors tell him to do. The realist he is is on the red carpet when he just smiles and waves. So yeah, the perfect spokesmodel. Hollow. Just tell him what to say and he'll say it. Now, I'm done talking about Leonardo DiCaprio, but before I move on, let me show you why he's such a great spokesman for, well, just about anything. You erased me, huh? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Shoot a cop, Einstein. Watch what happens. Well, what happened is this bull would go right through your f***ing head. Watch what happens. Don't kill me. Then we can examine the three dimples inside the middle of the skull. Now! What's it gonna be, Doc? Huh? One, two, three! My name is Jordan Belfort. Not him. Me. That's right. <laughs> awesome. Could you imagine anyone doing what Leonardo DiCaprio said? just because he said so? I mean, they must really think we're stupid at the United Nations. Well, actually, they do. Okay, well, the airhead celebrity millionaire we're going to talk about today isn't Leonardo DiCaprio. It's that burnt-out, lifelong drug abuser, Neil Young. I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm saying that to tell you about his mental state. He boasts that he smoked marijuana the way other people smoke cigarettes. But even with all the pot, he's smarter than me. I mean, he's worth about 65 million bucks. Not bad for a guy who has spent literally decades stoned. Anyways, you'll recall that Neil Young jetted up here to Canada, to Fort McMurray, to slander our oil sands. I say that because I spoke with one of the film crew that Neil Young hired to lovingly cover his visit. You know, Tim Moen, good guy. He was hired as a videographer for Neil Young. He was told what to shoot and what not to shoot. For example, Tim told us in an interview that he was told to film pictures of Neil Young's experimental Link Volt car, a million dollar monstrosity that Young claims doesn't use fossil fuels. Oh, but Tim was told he wasn't supposed to film the rest of the story about the Link Volt, the big old diesel bus that lumbers along behind the Link Volt like a rolling auto mechanic shop for when the Link Volt breaks down. Yeah, that would sort of ruin the eco aura, wouldn't it? Tim told us that he volunteered to film some positive stories for Neil Young when he was up there, environmental successes in Fort McMurray, the good news, news about innovation and harmony. He was told Neil Young wasn't interested. Neil Young knew exactly what he was coming to Fort McMurray for, to get ammunition against it. Not to actually learn anything, certainly not to open his mind to the possibility that Neil Young might be wrong about Fort McMurray. So to sum up, it's like a recipe for creating a stupid, so stupid that it'll literally create a new element in the periodic table, stupidium or something like that. You start with a stone celebrity millionaire. You add in a vicious political campaign to smear an entire city. Sprinkle in malice, deliberately not listening to any contrary opinions, and bake it. Yeah, Neil, I said bake it. Pretty funny, eh? 
and you get this kind of weapons grade stupidium. I described it as Hiroshima, which was basically pretty mellow compared to what was really going on up there. Yeah, man, mellow. Here, take a look. Here's a picture of Fort McMurray. According to Environment Canada, it has cleaner air than Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver. It's gorgeous up there. And this is a picture of Hiroshima. Hiroshima. Yeah, you old fool. I won't get into Neil Young's anti-Indian history also like the fact that his enormous ranch in California is built on unceded Indian land, taken by the government from the tribe that occupied the land without a treaty. I won't mention Neil Young's bizarre cultural appropriation, his deliberate career-long mockery of Aboriginal culture like this racist picture. Or here, let me quote Neil Young himself, boasting about his sex life as a rock star. I've, I've read this to you before. Let me just read it to you again. I don't think I got laid for effing years after I got into rock and roll. I think I was in Fort William when I got laid. Me and a nice little Indian and a DJ. The first time was not really that great. At least I didn't get any diseases, so it was good. Yeah, you know those Indian girls, eh, Neil Young? Gotta watch out for diseases, eh? Who cares about her name? Doesn't matter as long as she serviced you and your DJ. That's all that matters, eh, Neil? What a grotesque man. Yeah, when news broke out this year that Neil Young was cheating on his wife with fellow low-information, over-the-hill celebrity activist Daryl Hannah, I was completely shocked. That's so out of character for him, isn't it? Anyways, Neil Young, by the way, is the celebrity that David Suzuki has recruited to jet up to Canada to condemn our jobs on Suzuki's latest fundraising tour. Birds of a feather, don't you think? Well, all of that is nothing, though, compared to what Neil Young said yesterday. All of what he said and that I just mentioned is mere ignorance or selfishness or hedonism or breaking promises to loved ones or hypocrisy. But, I mean, so what? We all have some of those sins to one degree or another. A rock star who's a pig towards women and who abuses drugs, not exactly news. But let me tell you about what Neil Young said yesterday. He was on Howard Stern's radio show, mumbling and stumbling, whatever. But then he made the same mistake that Leonardo DiCaprio tries desperately to avoid. Neil Young made the mistake of expressing his own foolish thoughts instead of just reading the cue cards that some PR staffer has written for him. Now, we know that Neil Young is a multimillionaire with an enormous collection of cars and buses. We know he flies private jets. We know he lives in the smoggiest city in North America. Uh, when he came to Canada to attack us last time, he left his diesel-fueled bus idling during his concert because that's how he rolls because he's rich and famous so shut up but listen to what he said yesterday the things that we don't know it, you know we can do little things to fight climate change fight climate change and yet our army and our armed forces are the biggest uh, uh co2 providers into the world they just it's amazing and yet we're fighting like what isis what do you and, think uh, what do you think about al qaeda and we're fighting these these wars against these these organizations and their carbon footprint has got to be like one percent of our huge army and our navy and all of this stuff that we have with all our big machines and we're doing more damage to the earth with our wars than and and you try to find out Hey, freedom. No, freedom. You don't get it. You can't find out what that carbon footprint is of the military. It's not available for us. <laughs> so Howard Stern, who's used to anything, asked Neil Young about the world's largest, most brutal terrorist group. The terrorist group that has mass executions of Christians, Yazidis, even other Muslims who are too moderate for them. The Islamic State is really like the Nazis, mobile extermination squads. For American or British civilians who are foolish enough to be captured, they have a special execution style. Their heads are cut off. But perhaps that brutal death for Western men is preferable to the fate of being a woman captured by the Islamic State terrorists. They have an official policy of selling women prisoners or giving them to their terrorist soldiers as sexual prizes, that is, as, as slaves, as property to be raped again and again. The Islamic State steals things, plunders things like money, but they also plunder women and girls to rape them. Here's an Islamic State terrorist posing for a picture with a young girl, not even yet a teenager, that he has been awarded as a sex slave. He's so happy, isn't he? He's a child rapist, and he is proud of that, posing for a photo. So that's the Islamic State. And Neil Young says that we are doing more damage to the world with our carbon dioxide emissions, by which he means cars. Now put aside the science. 
Put aside the fact that carbon dioxide is not pollution. Put aside the fact that carbon dioxide has been rising for years, but the United Nations says that global warming, the climate actually stopped warming 18 years ago. So put aside Young's own hypocrisy, given all his cars and buses and jets. Just focus on the sheer amorality, the absolute lack of a moral code that would dare to equate these terrorist murders, rapes, pedophilia with Western armies trying to protect those victims. What kind of grotesque man would equate Islamic State terrorist rapists with our Western democratic countries? Here's more. We Are you upset about what's going on in the Middle East? I mean, of course, you're upset about everyone. You know, I, I don't like war. And I and, and I'm you know, I I think it's all about energy. And in the end, it's all about energy. That's what, what it's about. And it's going to be about water. Again, put aside just how stupid the man is. I mean, I get it. You spend close to half a century on pot. You're going to say stupid things. We get that. So ignore the fact that the United States actually removed all of its troops from Iraq and did so years ago. Put aside the fact that Iraq controls its own oil. It is not owned or dominated or controlled by the United States. Put aside those stupid falsehoods. Again, focus on the morality. Right now, the news from the region for this past week is the city of Kobani, 50,000 people, ethnic Kurds, who are holding off a siege and an attack from the Islamic State terrorists who are far better armed. The Kurds have little rifles. The terrorists have tanks. There is no oil in Kobani. It's an inhospitable rock. It's Muslim terrorists trying to kill and rape Kurds. That's who's fighting. There are no U.S. troops on the ground there. That's the bloody problem. Obama won't send in the troops because it would embarrass him too much because he withdrew the troops in haste two years ago so he could brag about in the election. So there are no U.S. soldiers there. That's a problem. No one is taking any oil. There is no oil in Kobani. This is a terrorist group trying to massacre thousands. America, and hopefully soon Canada, are doing a few small things from the air to harass the terrorists. Great. It likely won't be enough. Forget the fact that Neil Young doesn't seem to know these facts. Focus only on one thing, that when Howard Stern asked him several times what upset him about the Middle East, what he thought about terrorism, Neil Young made no criticism of it, no harsh words of it, not even mild words. Neil Young, when asked again and again by Howard Stern for his comment on the Nazi-style massacres being committed by Muslims against Kurds and Christians, all Neil Young would do was say that we are the evil ones, we are the ones with blood and oil on our hands, we are the ones who are worse. He said we're worse by his measure. Leonardo DiCaprio marches with the proles once a year, and then he goes back to his mansions. No harm done. He's just working an angle. Can you blame him? But Neil Young is different. He's not just doing some product endorsement. He's showing you what he really thinks again and again. He doesn't seem to hate the Islamic State terrorists at all. At least, he does not condemn them when asked to. He hates us. You, me, the Western world. Canada, from which he came. The United States, where he's lived for 40 years. Neil Young won't say he hates the Islamic State rapists because he's too busy saying how much he hates you.